Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Once again, it is five o'clock on Friday. Again, dad life, right? A million basketball games this weekend, only for my daughter. My son uh, kind of tore up his, uh, his calf a little bit, so he's kind of sidelined for a couple of weeks. But again, still a bar to dad life. So let's talk about the markets. Um, so Today ended uh, the quarter, right? Today ended the third quarter, um, and the numbers are pretty ugly, right? Uh, very, very ugly numbers. Let me just kind of run down for you. For the quarter, right? For the quarter. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, well, how about this? For the month, the S&P 500, right? Down 9.3%. That's a lot. Uh, the NASDAQ down about 10.5%, and... The New York Stock Exchange tumbled about nine percent for September. I mean, that's that's a, these are big numbers, and you know we've been talking about uh, ever since again we lost uh, the fifty-day moving average on the Nasdaq one hundred and pretty much on everything else. We lost it on that CPI, and all we've been doing is just going lower, lowers, lower, lowers, lower, lowers, and we've been talking about the sell bias nature uh, of this market. And when you start looking at earnings, and you start looking at all these different groups that are coming out with earnings like for example today uh you saw a pretty you know pretty good display of weakness everywhere you have uh nike foot and apparel you have carnival right you have carnival um uh, cruise ships and you have micron which is the semiconductor space with the whole story of semiconductor shortage but it really does show you this is not isolated to like tech technology this is isolated to everything else and we've been watching these videos i've been highlighting the the most important group in my opinion right not from the trading aspect of it not even from the investment aspect of it, but from kind of main street and that's the most important thing and that's the consumer cyclical basically the products that you need right that you need that you use every single day subconsciously that supposedly is not putting a dent into your wallet doesn't make a difference what your level of income is it's those names that you turn around and you say well I, I really need shampoo i really need razors i really need um, you know shower gel whatever the case may be and those are the names that are getting hit and those are the names that are being sold very very aggressively right procter and gamble uh colgate palm olive i mean these are these are massive moves uh coca-cola right Right, you have Kellogg, which I really like setting up uh, into next week. You know, names like General Mills that had a really nice move are just another day away from getting hit. So you're seeing all these again. It goes on and on. You got Estee Lauder, you got Kimberly Clark, right? All these names that are consumer cyclicals that are just really, really dying out. A name that we talked about on last night's video, uh, Pepsi. Right? We talked about Pepsi. Uh, Pepsi. If Coke already broke down, guess what? Pepsi's going to break down as well. And it did that today, and it looks like lower prices coming in uh, for its future. But more important of what is happening right now, the qu question is what happens down the road? And again, this is the most dangerous part of where a new trader um, is focused on, or at least uh, trying to be focused on. Um, I've traded several bear markets that lasted for two, three years, right? If you guys remember, after 2000, right, after the 2000 bubble, came 9-11. From 9-11 all the way up to 2003 was a really, really hard trading environment. Again, do I call it a bear market? I don't want to call it a bear market, but it was freaking damn tough, right? You go from 2007 to 2009, 2007, 2008. I don't know if there was math involved in this update, but carried the one, right? That's almost three years as well, right? From 2007, 2008, all the way to 2009. That's three, almost three years worth of selling pressure as well. Again, heavy catalysts, global uh, uh, potential Armageddon. So that was validated. And here we are, right? Here we are. Uh, you know what's going on with the Fed. Again, there's nobody, there's no reason to, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, go through what the Fed is doing and inflation. Is it transitory? Is it stagnant, dragnet, whatever the hell you want to call it? We are where we are, right? And that's the bottom line. So always remember, the market doesn't need to do anything, right? There was some periods of time and you could, you know, you could go back 
on the 100 year chart and you could turn around and go well it doesn't make a difference right the market will be okay eventually yeah eventually it will be now the question is can you be okay can you stay solvent when the market becomes quote unquote okay again right so there, there's no guarantee ever that the market has to go up when you want it to go up right and when you look at what the s p did this month right this is the we we had the worst month quote unquote march 2020 what was march 2020 remember the pandemic broke out well this month was worse than the pandemic okay so the the, the numbers are staggering they're very aggressive and unfortunately for all traders who started you know within the last couple of years again the only thing you do know is hot stock hot stock breakout breakout and i, I asked somebody a question a couple of years ago uh they turned to me and they're like hey dan you know what i don't short stocks i like buying breakouts cool right so my question to them was well what do you do when, when when the market goes down and their answer to me was well what do you mean that's my point a lot of traders started in the what do you mean stocks only go up what do you mean we're in the mean generation stonks right GameStop this one that one right we, we've never seen we've never seen a down market stop talking about this Dan you idiot we don't want to talk about no down market the market's going higher and we love a bull market where right? we love a bull market feels good everybody's more attractive everybody's taller my three inch penis goes to three and a half inches everybody's happier but unfortunately again like we've been talking about for, for a long long time gravity's real right technical damage is real there's other aspects of trading right that, that that are geopolitical geopolitical and now we're seeing the financial aspect of it taming inflation that is not going to be a pretty picture for a very long time but not from the point of the trading aspect from the main street aspect and again if if, if little johnny asks his mom and said mommy 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 can i get that box of frosted flakes and mommy says no i can't we can't buy that you know we're not asking for a lamborghini for god's sake we're asking for a box of and that's where the problem is and slowly but surely stock prices are starting to reflect that and have been reflecting that for quite a while again if you look at any consumer cyclical stock you could possibly see that the question is not to figure out when all this bad dream goes away and again it all depends what you who you talk to if you're if you're a trader and you've been doing this for a very long time again i prefer a bull market i love a bull market who doesn't we don't we don't need a bull market and that's the most important part uh stocks are very very aggressive to the downside uh the same way you look at a chart that's breaking out is the same way you look at a chart that's breaking down and it, it it's a little bit different right it's a little bit different trading because uh, again there's less market participants on the way down there's less a little bit less liquidity on the on the way down because of the less market participants but the good news is stocks go down a lot faster and a lot more aggressive and the one thing and again i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna reiterate this to to newer traders okay there's no such thing as a breakout during a bear market right there might be a stock that's green on the day and it might have its 15 minutes maybe even two hours of glory but at the end of the day no matter how strong that stock was or is or you think it's going to be the laws of the laws of uh the laws of bearishness right kicks in and that stock doesn't become strong and all you got to do is look at any stock that was strong today right snow today was very very strong right it was very very strong if you look at the you know 60 minute view of strong it was very very strong not so much right if you look at any stock any stock it doesn't make a difference you can look at literally any stock today that was green on a day that looked strong didn't end up strong and that's the whole point of a bear market and again like i said on every single video you, you're not you're not going to see the market go straight down right there, there's definitely up days there's definitely dead cat bounce days those days like i've been talking about in every video i have zero interest so yeah you'll get your little scallops this that the other thing but you want the meat and potatoes on the down days and that's the most important part not trying to you know not trying to because again if you guys remember a couple of days ago we had that dead cat bats day you guys remember how it took three hours for amazon to go up a dollar you guys remember that right it took it took like you know even today's action you saw moves to the upside on snow and, and you know maybe uh, a name like meta it took like the whole army the whole brigade right the whole you know literally everything for this stock just to move up a dollar before it crashed you know two three hours later and that's the whole point the value is always to the downside and the one thing that we've been kind of talking about all the time the event trade right when the market is good okay and this is what this is something kind of a, an important lesson especially for new traders when the market's good when a stock comes out with earnings it unless they use the word chapter 11 
the, pro the stock is probably going to perform, right? Because there's so much euphoria. Again, case in point, uh, this past quarter, Microsoft, Google, and a whole slew of other tech names, they all guided down. They all missed the top and bottom line. And guess what happened? They rallied, right? Remember this whole, this whole area here, right? They all rallied within this month, okay? When the market is bad, it doesn't make a difference what kind of good news you have. It doesn't make a difference. It's gonna sell everything and ask questions later. It's just kind of the reality. The majority names, no matter what the event, no matter what the catalyst, is going to sell. So case in point, right? Let's talk about Tesla. So if you've been watching the video now for the last, just over this week, we've been talking about, uh, we've been talking about this AI event, which I, I don't know what time it starts. It's right now, it's Friday, it's five o'clock Eastern time. I think at some point it's coming out uh, some sort of, some sort of news. Maybe they got some robot or something. Sounds cool, right? It absolutely sounds cool. But it, again, if you're watching this video for the first time and you haven't watched any, any prior videos for the last few days, there's been a lot of institutional sell bias on the stock, not just because uh, not just because people hate Tesla. People don't hate Tesla, right? There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, people who don't understand the technology or hate on Elon or hate on the car. We love you know we love Tesla, right? We love it again the upside, downside. We love the car. We love the boring company. We love the flamethrower, right? When I at Halloween, I'm going to use the flamethrower on my mother-in-law, right? So we love all that, okay? But the one thing the market goes based on what we just talk about when an event happens is the market doesn't care. So the AI event starts up at some point uh, this afternoon. There's always, I think there's also some sort of inventory, uh, excuse me, the deliveries uh, this weekend. And let me say this much, all right? There's a high probability and also institutional money flow. If you guys have been watching this video, they've been betting nonstop deep out of the money puts this whole week. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of um, um, there's not a lot of optimism, right? At least from institutional money flow, that this AI is going to change something uh, that the that the world is seeing. Again, I could be wrong. I could be absolutely wrong. But I will say this much, okay? Uh, nothing is a buy into the event, right? And again, you see it. You know, Tesla got sold off this whole day, this whole week. It's closing at the bottom of the range. And all I, all I know is I don't care about an event. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about the deliveries. I don't care about anything else, right? Anything, anything in the world. The only thing I care about is this channel right here going into Monday session. So if they release their event and they release their robots and everything else in, you know, in the world, Doge shit, Dogecoin, whatever, anything, anything, any news, right? The point is if they sell off that news, okay? And they start, viol and they start violating this bottom channel here, the only thing I know is there's 25 points of downside. That's all I know, right? So we don't know about uh, delivery, schmilleries, anything else in between. We know technical analysis. We survive, breathe, eat, fart, everything in between about technical analysis, not the news. It's, how, it's not the, what the market says, right? It's how the market trades off that news. So if there is, right, if there is some sort of good news and they do gap Tesla on Monday, I am not looking for a gap and go. I am looking for a gap in crap. And if this bottom channel, right, if this bottom channel starts getting violated, yeah, you can see how much room you have downside. Here's the crazy part, right, for all you kids in, in, in the gallery. If this stock actually goes higher, guess what? The worst case scenario, we buy stock. So scary, right? That's exactly what happens. Guys, have an opinion. No matter how what type of trader you are, no matter how many years you've been trading, don't be afraid to be wrong, right? That's how, that's how every thesis is built. And we don't do something on anticipation. Again, we could be having this conversation Monday morning. Hey, can you believe Tesla went up 20 points today? Hell, was I wrong, right? We don't care about being wrong. It's not a popularity contest. It's not about clicks and likes and shares and all that nonsense. Smash the like button, bro, right? It's not about that. It's all about taking data and trading it off that data technically. There's no anticipating. Uh, there is no positioning overnight ahead of an event. It's all about what happens next. And if you look at the surface, if you look at all the data that's been consumed in the stock over the last week or so, then yes, the institutions are betting against the event. I am looking at the bottom channel here and all I care about, right? I don't care if the stock is here, here, here. All I care about is if the stock continues to get below this channel here, and then you have a lot of room to the downside. So it's very, very important to understand. Again, we all love Tesla, right? Beautiful car, great trading stock. We love a good, a good bull market because there's nothing crazier than Tesla. 
But guess what? There's nothing crazy than Tesla to the downside as well. And that is at least where the value is going to be. So going into this week, uh, again, you got to start looking at a bigger picture, right? You have a potential move uh, all the way down to the 64 level on the Qs. Uh, if you look at the weekly view, and this is where you know, this is where you know you start uh, start looking at a bigger picture because you can't even see the chart anymore, right? We closed below this trend line that started a long time ago, below the trend line for the first time in a long, long time on the queues, right? If you look at the spies, spies did well. They 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 basically stopped right on the trend line, and if you look at the IWM, right, they are below this monthly trend line. So that's not a good thing. So the only way, guys, always remember this, the only way stocks are ever gonna go higher, they have to take out the previous channel, okay? We had that opportunity on Wednesday and the bulls failed and that's the most important part. And yesterday, right, yesterday they couldn't get above the previous day's high and today, right, and today, wait, what, what channel am I? Oh, this is IW, I know it looked, it looked weird. There we go. Ah, there we go. Much better, right? So two days ago, they had a chance to get above the channel and they didn't confirm. Yesterday, they took out this whole channel's low and today we took out the previous day's low as well. And unfortunately, again, if you are a permable, I wish I had some better news for you. But again, guys, again, this is the greatest opportunity to learn how to trade. There's a big difference between a trader and a person who buys stocks in the bull market. It's, it's very, very important to understand the difference. And until you can call yourself a trader, don't you have to learn from both sides of the market? Again, it doesn't mean, and it doesn't dictate that the market's gonna collapse. Nobody's talking about Armageddon, the market's gonna crash. All this is, is a normal cycle of buyers and sellers. And unfortunately, at least for the perma bull, the sellers are the ones who are in control. So that's it, that's it guys. So look for value. Um, Pepsi, I like for next week to go lower. That looks really good. Amazon is setting up for lower prices. You can see the bottom of the range here, very, very close, uh, very, very close to getting hit. So keep an eye on that. Let me see, let me give you guys a couple more ideas for next week. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me give you guys a couple more ideas for next week. Um, I like Kellogg, right? Again, the whole consumer cyclical thing. I like Kellogg below this channel here. I like Archer D Daniels Midland, right? Weird names, but again, that's consumer cyclical. ADM is an ag stock, food, all that crap, right? All that good crap. So look how tight the channel is, right? Looks good as well. AbbVie got absolutely murdered today, right? Look at AbbVie for next week. Again, look at the weekly chart on AbbVie, right? Look at that weekly chart on AbbVie. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's such a pretty girl. We'll be the prettiest girl at the ball, right? Look at this, gorgeous. So that's it, guys. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe, continue to work. Keep the faith, it'll click, right? It'll click, but you have to have the ability to trade both sides of the market and make unbiased judgment based on technicals. Guys, God bless, and I will see you all on Monday.